It's Decision Day here on Great British Menu. All week, three of Northern Ireland's finest chefs, Chris Fern, Chris Bell and Brian McCann, have been fighting for the chance to cook at the ultimate street party, a spectacular banquet celebrating the power of food to bring people together. Yesterday's programme saw the struggle for the main course and ended with wildcard Chris Fern joining Chris Bell in first place and leaving Brian one point behind. It's really, really close. We're all level pegging. There's no room for error. Scoring them all week is Richard Corrigan. At the level of the great British menu, you do not expect that in the dish. And it's their last chance to impress him. Only the two highest scoring chefs will face the judges tomorrow. The chef who slips up today is going home. It's all to play for. Today it's desserts and the three dishes battling for a place at the People's Banquet are chocolate fondue, lemon in a box and lemon curd tart. I've been down this road before and I do not want to go out this year. Everything rests on this final course. Mess up today, you can't fix it tomorrow. It's finished. This year, each chef has been set the task of seeking out local heroes from their community who work tirelessly bringing people together through food. You have to be very honest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fabulous end to a lovely meal. Success in the competition is more personal than ever as the winning chefs will get the chance to invite those they've met to the People's Banquet. Thank you very much. We'd love to. You know, they give so much to the communities. It'd be nice to give something back to them, you know what I mean? Today is the dessert course and the chef's last chance to impress former champion Richard Corrigan. He who produces the best pudding will have a very big smile on his face today. In joint first place, with a total score of 19, it's joker in the pack Chris Fern, a brasserie-style chef set on toppling his fine dining competition with a high-risk menu. He's already clocked up two wins this week and is determined to stay out in front with what he thinks is a killer dessert. I'm going in guns blazing here. I'm expecting to win it. It's going to be class. It's going to be mega. Talk to me. Tell me about this dish. I wanted lemon tart. I love lemon custard tart. It's great. Uh, we got some lemon and licorice battenberg cake. I don't see a dessert here. Well, tell uh, me. Come on. I'm not convinced. Right? I'm poaching off these lemons, I'm going to take the middle of them out, and I'm going to pipe lovely fresh ice cream into them, lemon ice cream, and lemon meringue, all presented in a nice wee sweet box, a wee bottle of lemonade to wash it down with. Is it good enough? I think it's good fun. I think people will understand it, and, and the, and the theatre of it all coming down, it's great. I like my puddings like my fish courses. Very simple. Chris Fern's pudding is anything but. He's pulling out all the stops with his box of lemony tricks. A more is more tactic that saw him come last in the fish course. Hang on, Chris. I didn't ask for afternoon tea. I want a pudding. Sharing the limelight with 19 points is Chris Bell. The only one of this week's chefs to have held a prestigious Michelin star, but he's yet to win a course. He's put in a solid but unexceptional performance all week, scoring average sixes and sevens, so is hoping to nail it with his dessert today. My chosen dessert is a feast for the eyes. It's, it, it's ideal for sharing and I think it's good enough to get me to the judges. What are you going to cook for us today? I'm going to make a tart. I'm going to do a, a tart of lemon curd. I'm going to macerate some berries, flavoured up with a little bit of elderflower. Okay, and I've got little ice cream cones. I'm going to do buttermilk ice cream. Is the spectacle enough? Yeah, I mean, with the individual ice cream cones, you know, the, the shot glasses, the tart on a separate plate. When the whole thing comes together, you'll see there is a bit of theatre and uh, it's ideal for sharing. Chris Bell's opted for another twist on a classic, lemon curd tart with buttermilk ice cream. But will playing it safe today deliver those vital points? I wonder how much thought did he really put into this pudding? Is that going to be enough to knock my socks off? Finally, trailing behind with 18 points, it's last year's loser, Brian McCann. He's cooked simple, honest food all week, but is changing tack on this final course in a last-minute bid to stay in the competition. This course for me is quirky. He is either going to love it or hate it. Brian, 
title of your dish today? I'm going to make a chocolate fondue mix. I'm going to make mm. passion fruit and pistachio marshmallows. I'm going to make some spiced banana bread. I'm going to make some coconut daquas. I'm going to make rosemary shortbread. And I'm going to have a selection of fruit. So you've taken that sharing, you've really well, concentrated sure. on that idea. I want to see the fun factor, the excitement, and I want to go to the judges. Brian's turning his less is more approach on its head, opting for an uncharacteristically novel chocolate fondue. A risky strategy this late in the competition. It's a great British menu. I want to see something really beautiful, something fantastic. Yes, he has the sharing aspect, but where's the wow aspect? With all three chefs vying for the top spot and everything riding on their desserts, a simple mistake today could reverse all their fortunes. It's all down to this, boys. One point in it. Bad dish today. Gone. Simple as that, yep. No room for error. Richard will be scoring each dish on taste, execution and whether it's good to share. And at the end of the day, he'll send one of these chefs packing. There's no question there's huge pressures now. It's neck and neck. They're on the dessert course. Someone is going home after this. Which one? Who knows? No one's feeling the pressure more than Brian. He lost out last year by just one point and is cooking outside his comfort zone in a bid to impress. A tactic even he's questioning. But this dish is so quirky. I, I, I just... Uh, nervous? I'm really nervous. He's making passion fruit and raspberry meringues one of five time-consuming components to dip in his chocolate fondue, a dish he knows could make or break him. But I don't know. Is it what they're looking? Is it the fun factor? You know, is there inter interaction in it? I think we're all taking risks here. Paper goes out, deserves to go out. But Brian doesn't want to be kicked out early for the second year running. This could be the, the, the trump card to get me through. I could just be packing my bags and getting home. Chris Bell has aimed to impress with precision cooking all week. Pass me a fine chinois. But so far he's failed to trounce his rivals. And Chris Byrne can't resist piling on the pressure. Chris, do you think this is a sense of fun? Do you think this is a celebratory kind of dish you're doing there? Do you think it's interaction enough? I think first and foremost it tastes good, you know. It's all about flavour, man. It's about, is the dish going to be right for the brief? Is it appropriate? Chris Bell knows he needs to get it bang on today and his nerves are starting to show. I may fall at the last hurdle. I may make it to the finish line, but maybe just being, you know, steady and solid all week isn't enough in this competition. Maybe it takes that little bit more and I've not had it this week. He's making buttermilk ice cream to serve with his lemon curd tart. Zest for curd? Yep. But with Chris Fern cooking a similar dish, the competition's hotting up. I suppose it was on lemons and the on the dessert? I know, you must be reading my meal. <laughs> you making any curd, Brad? Unfortunately, no. I'd love to be in the standoff with us. Get in the standoff with us. Huh? The big curd standoff. Chris Van's riding high on yesterday's result and is confident he's on to another winner with his fun box of lemon-flavoured desserts. The concept of it, the, the sharing element of it, the wow factor, it's all there. I couldn't be happy with it. He's been pushing the boundaries all week with fun, playful dishes, a tactic rival Brian has adopted today. And one Richard can't quite fathom this late in the competition. Brian, of all the dishes you've cooked, yeah. most have been quite safe and, you know what I mean, if anything, a bit samey. This one is a little bit wacky, you know what I mean? I, I, why, why the jump? Completely not, not what I do, but this is maybe what the different look I, I should have brought out. The competition, you know, it, it's completely, maybe it is just fun and I've overlooked it. He's making everything from coconut daquoise to rosemary shortbread, but will it be too much too late? I don't associate Brian McCann with boom and bust, but in this case, he's going all out to surprise us. Well, let's hope for him he does. Across the kitchen, Chris Bell is assembling his lemon curd tart. He lost out to maverick Chris Fern yesterday and was marked down by Richard for not hitting the brief. And Richard's worried he's making the same mistakes today. Are you going for anything to surprise? Not really. I've just got the, the little ice cream cones. I think are quite okay. a bit quaint and uh, some dry ice under them. That's and your really... lean to humour. Well, this guy's got a better sense of humour than me, you know. But I think, you know, what he's done in his dishes, you know, it's either, it's either really worked or it's, it's completely flumped, you know. So we'll see what, we'll see what happens today. 
Chris Bell's hoping his individual ice cream cones served in dry ice will be spectacle enough to keep him in the competition and get one of his dishes on the final banquet. I don't want to let the people down who, you know, I'd like to get to this banquet. Um, a lot of people have put faith in me with this and I want to repay them. The challenge for each of the chefs this year has been to create stunning sharing platters for the people's banquet. A magnificent street party celebrating food's ability to bring people together. Chris Bell travelled to Belfast, Northern Ireland to get inspiration for his menu. I've heard about these two ladies who have an allotment plot in the inner city Belfast and they, they've brought what's called the, the supper club in, into Belfast for the first time and they've invited me along to cook a version of the dessert that I'm going to cook for the, for the Great British Menu. Jenny O'Neill and Sarah Allen started Plot 15 Supper Club in an effort to get to know their neighbours and use up their allotment surplus veg. Welcome to our allotment. Wonderful. Hope you're ready to do a bit of work. Right. <laughs> and it's been a huge success, enabling them to enjoy good food and forge new friendships. It's a fantastic idea, but how do you go about choosing your guests for these events? I mean, do you know the people in advance? Or, or... We just have people that make reservations, people in the community, and they usually, know, they don't know each other and we don't know them, so... Was bringing people together through that, you know, something that you, you wanted to do also? Well, it's the best way to share time with people, yeah. to sit around a table and enjoy good food. I couldn't agree more. Chris can't wait to see the supper club in action firsthand. Yeah, sure. This is Tia. Hey, Tia, you're all right? Nice to meet you. Thank 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 you. Tonight, Jenny and Sarah are dishing up venison to eight hungry strangers, who by the end of the evening will be friends. One of the many reasons the supper club has been a success. It was the chance of eating some vegetables from her allotment was what, <laughs> was what attracted me initially, you know. But I was really surprised. I met some very interesting people. Food is something that we can enjoy and share, and that's one of the things I love in meeting people. Chris is eager to find out what tonight's guests think of his dessert. Okay, guys, what we've got is a version of a lemon tart, and uh, I just want to get some feedback on the flavours and whether this is something you would like to eat at a banquet. Oh, wow. Wow. You have to be very honest, yeah. <laughs> The lemon just it cuts through everything but in a good way and and the colours and yeah the texture of the buttermilk ice cream is just so smooth. I think I would like the shortbread to be a tiny bit crispier. Mm. That's really good. That's really good. For me it's, it's a fabulous end to a lovely meal. Mm. Thank you very much. Mm. If I'm fortunate enough to get to the final of this banquet um, I'm pinning my hopes on this dessert based on your feedback it would be a pleasure for me if Jenny and Sarah could attend. I'll keep my fingers crossed and try my damnedest for you. Thank you very much. <laughs> As far as breaking down barriers with people using food, they've hit the nail on the head. I want to get a dish on the banquet and get these two girls with me because they deserve it for what they do on a month-to-month -month basis. Back in the kitchen, three chefs are battling for two places in front of the judges tomorrow. Chris Bell's hoping he's done enough with his chefy lemon curd tart with buttermilk ice cream. Chris Fern's going all out to impress with a whole box of lemon flavoured desserts. And Brian's taking a last minute risk with an uncharacteristically playful chocolate fondue. Scoring their dishes is down to Richard and every point counts as the lowest scoring chef will be leaving the competition today. I really don't know which chef is going to go through here today. I really don't. It's all in their hands. With the two Chrises in joint first place, and Brian desperate to knock one of them off the top spot, their fates rest entirely with their desserts. I, I'm sure, like I'm one point behind. You two boys are even. I know it's not a lot because if one person makes a mistake.